Hey guys, Jurassic here and I'm back. And uh, um, you may have noticed that I missed out yesterday on yesterday's review. Yesterday I was planning on reviewing Godzilla vs. Megagirus. And today I am also reviewing GMK. As I just finished watching GMK. This movie right here. Just finished watching it today. Um, so today I'm going to do two reviews. Because yesterday I couldn't couldn't review Godzilla vs. Megagirus. I saw the movie yesterday. This one right here. I saw it yesterday but I couldn't film a review of it. So I'm going to have to film it today. So I'm gonna film two reviews today, too. Um, so I'm gonna film it back to back, so that way, um, you know, I can make life a little bit easier. But right now, we're gonna review Godzilla vs. Megagirus and share you my thoughts on the movie. So Godzilla vs. Megagirus, it is the second Godzilla movie of the Millennium Era. It came out in the year 2000, and um, it follows the plot follows Godzilla attacking various nuclear power plants and plasma energy plants across Japan in a span span of over. Um, 40 years, 30 or 40 years, and we have the JSD, JSDF planning a wormhole device which can launch wormholes, you know, <clears throat> the device itself, it's called the Dimension Tide, it's a, it's a brand new satellite weapon that can launch wormholes and they plan to trap Godzilla with it for eternity. Unfortunately, when they test the device, it allows uh, for a giant prehistoric dragonfly to come out of it and lay eggs and... The eggs hatch and they get found by a little boy. The little boy throws it in a sewer, unknowingly causing a drought in Tokyo as the dragonflies come out of the... The dragonflies, you know, hatch and they start, you know, to form into the giant dragonfly monster known as Megagirus. Meanwhile, the JSDF is trying their best to try to stop Godzilla with the Dimension Tide. And, you know, during that, during all that, Godzilla and Megagirus both fight and then... That's kind of the plot right there. And then they try to use the Dimension Tide to trap Godzilla into a wormhole once and for all. So that's kind of the plot right there. Oh, and, and there's a... The main human character is also on a vengeance quest to kill Godzilla after her commander, General, um, gets killed by Godzilla years prior to the movie's plot. So that's the whole plot of the movie. Um, right off the bat, um, I think probably one of the more interesting things about the movie and... Probably one of the few things I could honestly, I honestly got invested in was the Dimension Tide. The whole, you know, wormhole concept thing where they were planning to trap Godzilla for eternity using the um, the Dimension Tide, which launches wormholes. Now, that was a pretty interesting idea. I actually bought into that idea. Like, like I'm thinking that, yes, Japan is finally thinking of, you know, creating new ways of stopping Godzilla. And they're not just reusing tanks and jets and... You know, things like that. So I'm glad that they're innovating with some new weapons, you know, like that. Unfortunately, though, it kind of, the movie kind of stretches for a while. Like, it doesn't, like, it picks up on that subplot, but then it kind of stretches out. It's not like Godzilla vs. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, which is right here. Where I mentioned in that review that plots do take a break, but at least there's other plots that keep you, keep you interested, at least. While the first plot point took a break, the second plot point at least kept you awake. Here... Um, it just kind of takes a break with this movie right here. The Dimension Tide is not really... They don't use it a whole lot in the movie. Like, that's the only thing that I should mention. Um, Godzilla and Mechagiras are the only... Honestly, the only interesting things about this whole movie. I mean, I just kind of summed up my review of the whole movie right there. Godzilla and Mechagiras is honestly not a very interesting movie. It's kind of... It's kind of... Un, it's not really that interesting, honestly. Like, it doesn't offer you that much. Like... The human element, I guess, is fine, but they're just hollow shells. Most like, for the most part, they're hollow shells. I think the one character that seems to get an arc is the main female character. Don't actually remember her name, but the main female character, whose general command, like commander, gets killed by Godzilla years prior to the movie. Like, she she's given this whole vengeance plot, you know, this whole revenge plot against Godzilla, and it's actually kind of interesting. I do, I do. I do admire that kind of arc, human arc that she's given, but, you know, motivational arc, I guess you can say. But once again, it just kind of, it appears, you know, at the beginning of the movie, and then it just kind of takes a break, and then it appears again like that. Like, <clears throat> the movie, it's, we don't get to know her all that well, we don't get to know any of the other characters, the other characters are just kind of there, and um, that's basically it. Like, <laughs> there's nothing... Godzilla vs. Mechagirus, which is this movie right here, it's just not not all that interesting. There's some interesting ideas there, but they crammed it into this one movie that, yeah, it's just, <laughs> you watch it and it's like, 
Eh, just show me something else. Just show me Godzilla again. Um, what you call it? Oh, yeah, and the other thing I was going to mention, um, Godzilla in this movie, you know, I would say he is given <clears throat> motivation in his movie too. Godzilla um, does not get the, does not get killed by the Octagon Destroyer. In fact, he is the same Godzilla from the year 1954 that attacked Tokyo, but this is a different... This is a different kind of timeline. You would think that this movie is a sequel to Godzilla 2000 because they both share the same Godzilla design, but it's not. It's actually a reboot. This Godzilla right here is, is while well, not in the movie mentioned, but in websites that relate to the movie, he's mentioned to be the second Godzilla of that timeline after the original Godzilla was killed. This Godzilla right here that you're looking at, that is the same Godzilla from 1954. It just doesn't get killed by the action destroyer. It just appears throughout history and feeding off nuclear power plants, which... I actually got him. I actually bought into that. I bought into the Godzilla being attracted by nuclear energy, and then when they try to use plasma energy, you know, years later, it still affects him. And then there's also this whole human plot thing that honestly it just comes out of nowhere. It comes out at the end of the movie, and it's something that just you know, like something that you think to yourself, wait, why couldn't they just figure that out? It's that business suit guy who hides, who secretly hides plasma energy inside the Science Institute building. And at the end of the movie, after Godzilla destroys Mega Gears, spoiler alert, um, he said that he he believes plasma energy can be used for Japan again. And I'm just thinking, what the fuck? Like, this guy, he literally pulled this out of nowhere. Like, we like the other character should have thought about, should have like realized this, like, but they didn't, you know. And it would seem kind of dumb for him to like hide it there when he could have hide it in an island or somewhere else. Like, I don't know. That whole motivation thing from the business guy, human character, him hiding the plasma there, it just comes out of nowhere. Um, but still, I did bought into Godzilla's motivations of going after nuclear power plants. And once again, this Godzilla, I really like this Godzilla design. This is the same Godzilla design from Godzilla 2000, but not the same Godzilla from Godzilla 2000. And it just kind of bothers me that why do they... Why do they retcon this movie and then just start all over? Like, why? Like, they should have just made this into a sequel. But even if it were a sequel, it's an inferior sequel. Like, this movie is kind of inferior, like, compared to Godzilla 2000. Like, it doesn't get... It doesn't really go anywhere that interesting, you know? There's some interesting ideas, but there, it doesn't go anywhere interesting. Um, now, speaking of Godzilla, I do want to talk about his opponent, Megagirus, who was a new kaiju. Uh, Megagirus is basically a prehistoric dragonfly. That was called Manu Magu. I might mispronounce his name, so sorry. Oh, there we go, Meganulon, the prehistoric dragonfly that lived during well prehistoric times. It comes out through the wormhole and it starts attacking people on the streets of Tokyo. Now that part of this, I'm assuming you remember that part where it attacks these two couple, this couple that are in an alleyway. That is straight out of a horror movie. I actually like that when it was in its first form, first form, and it attacked people, and you only see it. POV and you see glimpses of it attacking people. That is straight out of a horror movie. I actually like that. And the whole evolution thing where it evolved into this dragonfly and then it, you know, they get they get attracted by Godzilla's DNA and then they use that DNA to revive their queen and it becomes Mechie Gear. That is, a, that is interesting. Like, that was... I actually bought into that. That was pretty cool. But the fact that they put it into this one movie and this movie didn't offer you anything that interesting, you know, like, nothing that made you really entertain or anything like that. It I just feel like they could have put it in a better movie like honestly um the uh what you call it the final battle of the movie is pretty good it's pretty good um you know it's it actually goes on for a pretty long time it i would say it goes a little bit longer than Godzilla 2000's final battle when he fought orga this one right here i would say it goes on for a little bit longer where he f fights and i'm not gonna lie um megagirus is still a pretty cool kaiju i do want to see her come back in another movie or um like, I did like her evolution thing, and I even liked how when when she fought Godzilla, it was actually pretty cool. Like, it was actually, she, she actually outsmarted Godzilla, and Godzilla even outsmarted her. Like, so uh, it was pretty interesting. But other than that, that's kind of it, really. Like, the ideas are interesting. The final battle was pretty good. The monsters are good. Human, The one human character that I mentioned, that I forget her name, I guess she's given it motivation and arc, but, like, it just, like... It's it's only on the surface, really. Like you don't you don't really care. Like so, yeah. This movie, Godzilla's Mega Gears. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of a letdown. It, it wasn't all that interesting. It wasn't like it didn't really make you think. You know, it just kind of comes and goes. Like really, like if I were to rank it, I would probably give it a four point six out of ten. 
Because, yeah, it, w it wasn't really all that exciting. It wasn't really anything. It's not a terrible movie, but it's just not that... It's just not that interesting. Like, I just wanted the movie to end. Like, honestly, I only came in to see the final battle between Godzilla and Megaguirus. That's the only thing I bought into. Like, at least with the monster side of things. With the human side of things, I did bought into the Dimension Tide, the, the weapon that's used to kill Godzilla. Or they, they try to kill Godzilla, you know, by launching wormholes at him. I bought into that. That was pretty cool, but... Beyond that, that's kind of it, really. Like, I, uh, I couldn't sit through the movie with interest, you know. It was just, yeah, it was just meh. So, those were my thoughts on Godzilla and Megaguirus. And uh, what do you guys think about the movie? Do you guys liked it? Do you guys hated it? Do you guys are just in the middle like I was? I mean, <clears throat> it's definitely the weakest of the Millennium entries. I mean, think about how these other movies right here. You know, these all, all these other movies, especially GMK, Final Wars, and Godzilla 2000, they're far superior than this one. Even the two Kira movies they see right here, which I'm going to review, and yes, I'm going to review this one right after I review this movie. Those, they at least go, you know, an extra mile. Like, they at least, you know, keep you, they kept you interested. Even if, even if the rest of the movie was just mediocre to you, at least it had things that kept you interested. This one, it had you interested for in it for only five minutes, and that's it. <laughs> like... <laughs> that's kind of it really so yeah well those are that's basically my review of Godzilla vs. Megaguirus didn't really didn't really enjoy the movie all that much it you know offered you some interesting ideas and interesting kaiju and kaiju battles but that's kind of it really that's nothing nothing else to say about it so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the review um hope you guys um hit the like button you know comment on my videos and subscribe to, subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for my other review that I'm about to post after I review this one. And um, and I'm going to talk about GMK, which is, uh, you know, in a few minutes. So, yeah. See you, see you guys in a little bit.